Get his book out now. All right, you need to make audio here, man. I'm getting ready to tell you one, man. It's for the youngins, man, so you know how vicious this thing is and how violent it get in the prison, man. So if you don't think it's nothing nice or if you're committing crime, whatever you're doing, stay out that lane, you know, because, you know, ain't nobody, you know what I mean, immune from this, right? But we we in California, right? And, uh, you know, we in Atwater, you know what I mean? I'm talking about Atwater. It gets up to 115 degrees, you know what I mean? You know, uh in the daytime, you know? So we get up early morning, about six o'clock in the morning, we start drinking water. So we drink about a gallon of water, you know, before nine o'clock, you know what I mean? Eight thirty nine. so that after we eat breakfast, we go in, you know, brush our teeth, get ready or whatever, we get our workout gear, we go to the yard, we go work out. I used to go work out my man Minx in the yard, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to Minx, Mario, you know what I mean? Say a prayer for my brother. He got killed, you know, a couple of weeks ago in the joint. So this is dedicated to my man Minx, you know? So now, me, Minx, and, you know, one of the other little homies from D.C., we go out there and we go work out every day. We doing our little push-ups and stuff and, you know, burpees and, you know, crunches and all that. So we sitting out there and they got like a soccer goal. And, you know, we ain't allowed to work out, so they don't have no workout equipment. So we make do whatever. Like, we go over to the sink, you know what I mean, where the, where the sink meets in a cat corner like this. We put our chest in between that and we do the push-ups, you know, the dips on that, so that's the dip bar, the cement around the toilet, you know what I mean, in the water fountain. And then we got the soccer goal and we do the pull-ups on the soccer goal, right? 100 something degrees, so we out there working out every day. And um, just to show you how crazy it is, one of the little young homies came in and uh, he working out with us and he in the cell with a dude from what they call the Dirty South. I ain't gonna say exactly where cause I ain't trying to put the brother out there like that. But he from the Dirty South. You know what I mean? So now he living in the cell, you know, with the little DC homie that's working out with us. You know what I mean? So while we working out in the joint, he leave one day, he shoot back in early. When he go back in early, you know what I mean? We finish working out, we go back in the unit and you know, they call recall, 1030 recall. So everybody come back from where they at. So we come back in the joint and uh, dude sitting in there and he go in the cell and he notice his wine's missing. You understand what I'm saying? They, we make wine uh, in a wine in a milk bag. You know what I mean? The milk bag that they serve milk in, in the crate early in the morning. They got these big, thick plastic bags that hold the smell in and it's strong. And it got a hose on it that, you know, you, you pick the little handle up and the milk drip out the thing. But when they done with it, they save the milk bag and they turn around and they sell the milk bag for like five big books of stamps because, you know what I mean? That's the bag to hold the brewery. So now, dude making little five gallons of wine in the joint. He come back from working out, he go in his wine missing. He pissed off, so, you know, the police done took his wine. He go down there to go scream on the police because he needed that money. You know what I mean? That little wine money. You know what I mean? Because when he done with that little five gallons, he gonna make about two, 250, 300, you know what I mean? Maybe even 500 off that joint. So he go to police and say, yo, what's up? You shook my cell down? Police said, nah, I ain't shake your cell down. I ain't even shake no cells down. You know, I don't want no problems with none of y'all. He said, yeah, but something missing out my cell. He said, we well, need to check your homies because I'm not going in your cell because I don't need no problems from none of y'all. I get off at four o'clock and I'm going home and y'all stay here and do whatever y'all do. You know what I mean? And I'm minding my business. So he go back up there and he asks his cell, yo, what's up? You know, he asking people, do you see anybody go in my cell? They say, nah, ain't nobody been in your cell. You know, we ain't doing that. So the next thing you know, um, he figured out that it had to have been his cell. You understand what I'm saying? So he gets in an argument with his cell. He's saying, I know you took my joint, da 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 So he goes across the compound now, the Dirty South dude, you know what I mean, to his homie's, um, you know, cell, you know, homie's unit. So when he go over there to his homie's unit, he chilling out with them, they smoking weed, they drinking wine, and you know what I mean, they kicking it, and he telling them what happened, you know what I mean? But before he went over there, you know, when he was arguing with the little homie, Minx told him, yo, leave it alone, I'ma find out what happened. If he took it, I'ma make sure you get paid, but leave it alone. If he took it, I'ma make sure you get paid, and I'ma discipline him because that's my homie, you know what I mean? But you ain't gonna be talking to my homie kind of, any kind of way. So dude leaves, go back on the other side to go hang out with his homies and all that, and he gave Minx his word, he was gonna let him find out what happened with the wine, cause Minx said he gonna pay him. Rest in peace to Minx again. 
So he go back on the other side. He talk to his homie and his little homies and them telling them, nah, man, you can't have them do them DC dudes, this, them DC dudes, that. They're going to think you soft because you got, you let them get away with it. You just coming on the compound. You, you don't know how these DC dudes move. They're going to look at you like you soft, man. You got to go back and stab that dude. You know what I mean? So they don't gave him a knife. He come back over the joint. You know what I mean? After he gave Minx his word, he wasn't going to do nothing. The key thing is he gave him his word to show you how powerful the word is in the prison. If you give your word to anybody, even the administration, like when you go to administration, they say, yo, they locked up Johnny Bluefoot. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get him out. And they'd be like, look, if I let him out, you're going to promise me ain't nothing going to happen to him and he ain't going to retaliate against whoever he got into it with while he got in the hole. You understand what I'm saying? And he's like, nah, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm giving you my word. So now they're going to let him out. You know what I mean? And whoever it is that went to stop talk for him, because it'd be like, you know, a bunch of people would go up there at different times to talk to the SIS to show him that the whole car want him out, not just one person. So the whole car makes so he stay out of trouble. He don't get into nothing. So now... That's the word. Keep that in mind. Same way dude gave the dirt, uh, the dirty South dude gave Minx his word that he wasn't going to do nothing. So now he turns around and the dirty South dude come back from the other side. And just when they, uh, uh, um, when they call the move, you know what I mean? He pulls out a big ass knife like this. You know what I mean? And he goes at the dude, his celly that took the wine. So they fighting and carried on and, you know, boom, 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 boom. And, you know, one of the other DC dudes throw him a cane. He got the cane. He backing him off with the knife. And they having a sword fight with a knife and a cane. And they carried on out there. And they, you know what I mean? They going at it. Police start shooting at everything. So we wise up getting on the ground and all that. They come, they locked him up. You understand what I'm saying? But now, before he got locked up, when the dude was on the other side, I asked the little DC homie. I said, yo. You know what I mean? Why would you take your celly's wine? You know he gonna know it's you and you in the cell with him. You gotta have to make, be at peace with your celly because if anything happened, he gotta hold you down and vice versa. If somebody come in the cell to do anything to either one of y'all. And he's like, yeah, but that nigga soft. And I'm like, damn, well, how you, you know, come up with the conclusion he's soft? Now listen to this one. He said he's soft because he had a pair of glasses like these, like these Versace's. You know what I mean? He had the little, the little cheap joints that, you know, you buy on like, 125th Street or 116th Street or Fordham Road or wherever y'all buying from in your little state, you know, little $5 glasses. So now he said he traded me them for a pair of institutional glasses. And, you know, so he gave me his Versace's for a pair of $5 glasses. So I had to remind him that those are not Versace's, my nigga. Those are uh, fake Versace's. They fake. You know what I mean? And he's like, nah, man, them joints is Versace's. You know what I mean? Because he know he going to look good in them like if they Versace's. You know what I mean? So, you know. He took, dude, giving him a pair of $5 glasses from the street that go for $150 in a joint for a pair of $5 glasses from the commissary. You understand what I'm saying? So he take it that he's soft, like if he was scared of him, that's why he made that trade. But the dude made the trade because the dude know, you know what I mean, in his, in his head, just like, you know, the rest of us, you know, know that they fake. So they still only worth $5. But he took it that he was soft because he gave him the glasses. So now they lock the two of them up. Let's get back to the story. They lock the two of them up. So now while they up there in the shoot, um, you know, we go into the SIS, the DC dudes, and New York dudes that mess with them. And, you know, we all tell them like, yo, let the homie out. You know what I mean? You know, everything good, everything good. You know what I mean? So they said, all right. So then now the Dirty South going to the SIS, tell them the same thing. So they agreed to let them out. You understand what I'm saying? So the DC speaking for the DC homie, Dirty South speaking for the um, Dirty South homie to the SIS. That's the special investigation service in the prison, which is like the detectives and the FBI for the prison. So while that's going down now, Dude turns around and they let the Dirty South dude out first because their car wasn't that big. They car might have had 20, 30 people in it. You know what I mean? When I say car, I mean the men that was from Dirty South was maybe maybe 50 people. But the D.C. dudes now was like three, 400 deep. So they let the, the Dirty South out first to see if they was going to punish him for going at the D.C. dude. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, what was going to happen? So they let the Dirty South do. Oh, no, my bag. Let me run that back. They let the... um. They let the uh, D.C. dude out first. So when they let the D.C. dude out first, you know, Minx and, um, and Larry Moe, the men that they are, you know what I mean? They went and they told the, the, the they little homie, said, nah, homie, you got to go back up top. He got to come out first because I don't want them to think we don't want the, the compound, you know, the other cars to look at us like if, you know, you did something while you came out here and you read it. So now you go back up top. And, you know, let homie come out first. You know what I mean? And then you come out. Because both of y'all were supposed to come out together. It wasn't supposed to be no one at a time. And if they only letting one out, we don't want ours out. 
But if they letting both of y'all out at the same time, that's good. But we're not going to have you come out here and then people speculating that you out here because you told. And that's why the Dirty South still in there and now the D.C. car got a black eye. So that's how tight Larry Moe run this joint, man. So Larry Moe told him, nah, you got to go back up top. So, you know, they walked him back up top with his, with his luggage. You know what I mean? His green paper, uh, plastic bag. So he go back up top. So then now they let out the Dirty South through the next day. So the, the next week, because they let him out on Tuesday. That, that Thursday, they let him out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So that th uh, Tuesday, they let out the D.C. dude. Larry Moe told him, now nah, you got to go back up top unless they're going to let both of y'all out on Thursday. You know what I mean? So they didn't want to let them both out, so they let the Dirty South dude out on Thursday. So when he come out on Thursday, he come back to the unit and he go back in the cell because the cell is empty because both of them was in the shoe. And, you know, like I said, we, they got, you know, that, that's a D.C. cell. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, that's what it is. So nobody was in the cell. So dude come back, they put him in the cell. So now when he come in the cell, all the DC dudes coming like, like flies on shit to the unit. They ready to punish this nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Cause they let him out. You know what I mean? By himself. And he came out without the little homie when the DC dudes, you know, Larry Moe was mad enough to say, nah, we, we're not going to let ours out unless they both come out. You know what I mean? Something like what Kevin Childs did when, you know, that's how men do. When he was going to trial and they offered him 10, he said, only way I'm going to take the 10 years if you give my man 10 years. So Larry Moe was on the same type of, you know, man time where he told him, only way you coming out, you know what I mean? Is if they letting both of y'all out. So that's the same thing the Dirty South should have did, but they didn't do that. They let him out. So when he come out, all the DC dudes come, they ready to punish him up and stab him up now. So he goes in the cell and when they ready to stab him up, Minx told him, nah, y'all don't do nothing, stand down. He gave me his word that he was going to let me handle it, and he wasn't going to do nothing. And I even told him I was going to pay him, you know what I mean? And that I was going to discipline the homie, but instead he came back with a knife, so on the strength of that, now I got to punish him. You know what I mean? And I don't need none of y'all in there with him because that's between me and him. He gave me his word, so he violated his word to me. You know what I mean? And dudes was in their body a little bit, but they knew he was right. So Minx going to sell, knocking, you know, rocking and rolling with the dude. Dude wasn't nothing soft. Let's get that right. So they had a little boom, boom, boom in the cell. Moose hooked off on him. He saw he couldn't really uh, uh, um, deal with Minx. So he ran out the cell. So when he ran out the cell, he seen all these DC dudes lined up on the top tier. You know what I mean? Where the cell was at. So when he come out the joint, you know what I mean? Niggas is hooking at him. You know what I mean? Niggas got knives and all that. So he run and he jumps over the tier. You know what I mean? And he jumped from the second floor in the, in the dormitory and he ran to the front. So I'm telling you, youngins, don't get involved in this because this, this is what go on in the prison. So he jumps over the tier to get away from the 20 DC dudes up there trying to stab him up and he makes it to the front door. As soon as he makes it to the front door, he like, ah. He took a sigh of relief. He thinking he cool. But then here come Larry Moe that took a little longer to get out of his knife because he wanted to get the special knife, the joint that looked like a Christmas tree that got the jigs on, look like a fish scale. So now as soon as he run out, Larry Moe hits him, bomb. So when he hits him in the gut, you know what I mean? He pulls the joint out. When he pulls the joint out, it went in so deep, it pulls his intestines out. You know what I mean? So dude grabs his stomach and he tries to run and Larry Moe hit him again, bomb. So when he hit him again, he pulled him out. Now his intestines is hanging on the ground. You know, intestines is like four feet in your stomach. You know what I mean? So you get a mad nigga intestines with blood and everything. He holding his hand and he running. So he ran across the hall to, to, to my unit now to get to the police. But there they got what they call a sally port. You know what I mean? The sally port is a little sliding door that's worn by the control. And then they got a door in the unit that the police have a key for to let them in. But the sally port was open. So he run the sally port and he banging on the door. And here come Larry Moe coming behind him and punishing him again. And he begging the police to let him in. So when the police look and see this man with his intestines hanging out in the in, 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 in a, um, Sally Port hallway, he panicking. He like, I'm not opening the door. But now he see Larry Moe coming. But Larry Moe, you know what I mean? Don't care about none of that because he's straight man. You know what I mean? He's holding down the homie. So the police hurried up and called center control. Close the slider. Close the slider. So they closed the slider. And when they closed the slider, um, Larry Moe couldn't get to him no more. But the dude stuck in there with his intestines hanging out in the joint. You understand what I'm saying? So now, you know, they wind up locking the joint down. They move him back and all that. You know what I mean? They take him out and rush him to the hospital. The dude made it or whatever. But you know what I mean? That's just how it go in the prison, man. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to Minx and big shout out. To Larry Moe, you know what I mean? But I'm just letting the youngins know, man, it's real in there, man. You give your word on something, it's not like out here where you tell somebody you're gonna do something you don't do it and nobody care if you do it or not because this and that. Nah, you give your word and you violate your word, you get punished, my nigga. You know what I mean? But like I said, they keep it within the car. So that's why Minx told the dude, yo, you stealing. You know what I mean? We from DC, we the elders, we don't steal from nobody. If you wanted to wind from them, Larry Moe and Minx both told him, you should have just took it in his face. 
You know what I mean? And give him a straight up. Let him fight for it. But you don't sneak thieve him and take it while he in the yard. He coming back, going to the police and all that. So, you know, you know Larry Moe wasn't with that. You know what I mean? Period. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's how that went down, man. But, you know, it's just real, man. Like I said, y'all out here saying things you don't mean and calling people names that ain't right and this and that. And you know it ain't right. But, you know what I mean? Because there's no consequences to it. But that's one of the consequences in prison, man. So when I tell you these stories, don't think that, you know what I mean? I'm glorifying it or nothing like that. I just want y'all to know the real what time it is, man. It ain't nothing nice on the inside, man. It ain't nothing nice. Big shout out to Anton White. Rest in peace, man. Big shout out to my man, Larry Moe. You know what I mean? ER, the whole family. You know what I mean? Rat, uh, 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 Big Red. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it, it's all men, man. I mean, that's what we do. You know what I mean? But, you know, I'm going to tap out now. And I've been here long enough. I just wanted to give you all that story about, you know, honoring your word. You understand what I'm saying? Honoring your word. So maybe you all realize that there's consequences to actions. Because back in the day, they used to decapitate you for lying. You understand what I'm saying? You never know. I'm talking about it wasn't no rolling up on you, doing a drive-by, innocent kids getting shot, nigga walk right up in your face and give you two to the head. You know what I mean? That's consequences. For, you know what I mean? So I'm telling y'all, let me tap out. Been on here long enough. I just want to let everybody know, you know, don't commit a life of crime. Don't get involved in the bull crap. It ain't worth it. You know what I mean? Because you don't know where you're going to wind up. You don't know when you're going to wind up in that situation. And the only way to avoid walking up in that situation is not getting involved with the bullshit. All right. Cheers, 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 Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up 10 toes down, then I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in home, uh -huh. he cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom, Back. drop the book, you should go and get it, the Instagram page and the YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself linked in, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh -huh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, uh -huh. did not pay attention would be stupid, talking about by the man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio Get it live like two G's in the night. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. What? Spin a couple bands on the dapper dan. Oh. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. Clint. No cap, this a roaring uptown. Yeah. They be horn uptown, Dominican bust downs. Word. Now we on the positive. Word. You we got a lot to give. Yes. Now you trying yes. to stop the kids from being an operative. Oh. So take heed, homie, lend the air. Oh. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. Uptown. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars It's nope. about buying property to make the community ours Facts. So we can give back to the youth them Cause they the truth them uh -huh. And bless up to all the rude men yeah.